The PlayStation 5 is here, and they really blew the doors out of the place with their presentation. Hi folks, it's Falcon, and today on Game Ranks, the top 15 new PS5 games announced at the PS5 event. Just a quick disclaimer, a few games that have already been announced we're not going to talk about. Godfall, Deathloop, and Ghostwire Tokyo. I mean, we've seen stuff about these games. We saw a little more today, but not a lot, and we already know about them, so let's just move on. Starting off at number 15 is Returnal. Now, this is a really interesting thriller that kind of has that Edge of Tomorrow vibe to it. You're an astronaut who lands on a planet, dies, and continually lives out this cycle of living on this planet and dying. The trailer makes mention of the world kind of melding with her being, and how things change every time. It looks like it's basically a third-person shooter, but it looks like there's a lot more to it, narratively speaking. And for that reason, this looks like a really good PlayStation 5 exclusive to me. We don't have a specific date for it, but I am certainly looking forward. Moving on to number 14, it's Spider-Man Miles Morales, which is a holiday 2020 exclusive. I didn't figure we were getting a Spider-Man sequel this year, but I'm pretty stoked about that. There's a decent chance we're not talking about a full-scale sequel, but rather a standalone smaller game like Infamous First Light, but that still sounds great. Most likely, we're going to see it expand on the systems that we saw in Spider-Man, which was, as you know, really a great game. This time around, obviously, it's Miles Morales. I can't tell you exactly what continuity that places this in. Miles, obviously, is in a lot of different continuities, but I think we can have decent expectations as to exactly what the game itself will be, and let me tell you, I'm definitely ready for that specifically. Definitely look Looking forward to the holiday. And number 13 is Destruction All-Stars, which is just the coolest looking driving game. While they certainly did focus a lot on single player games, and I appreciate it, when they went multiplayer, they made sure we were going to be stoked. Now, we don't know a lot about this title, but we do know that you play as a human who can get in and outside of a car in this wild arena destruction derby that looks to be a physics playground. Apparently, this is an exclusive game, and to me, that says, well, looks like they've got a killer multiplayer ad for the PlayStation 5. Because if it's even half as fun as it looks, it's that. Moving on to number 12, it's Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, which not only shows us we get a new Ratchet and Clank title, not only shows us that Insomniac has the budget to do two games at once, not only gets us hyped and nostalgic at the same time, but it's also a tech demo. We got to see how the high-speed PS5 SSDs affect loading, and wow is the answer. We're just streaming in new worlds all the time, jumping through these portals, never loading once. It would be so incredibly complex to even fake all of this teleport but they're not faking it. Like, they're not loading in cheap geometry that looks like a level. They're loading in these huge detailed environments that look amazing. On top of that, the gameplay looks absolutely enjoyable as hell, and I cannot wait to return to the world of Ratchet and Clank. We don't have a release date for this one, but I'm there. At number 11 is Project Athea, a game that looks incredibly fast-paced for a Square Enix title, but at the same time has that Final Fantasy XV look. Like, the environment to me is very reminiscent of that, and frankly, it should be reminiscent of that. It's made by the same team. However, it looks like they added a lot of color to the equation. It looks to some extent that this game bases itself not just around combat, but also around environmental traversal, and it looks very interesting to me. It's very surreal looking, very otherworldly, and aesthetically reminded me of Dark Souls a little bit. However, the gameplay does look a lot faster in pace. We did not get a release date for this title, and given the fact that it has the word project in the name, it's probably going to be a long time. But hey, Project Athea looks cool as hell. Moving on to number 10, it's Stray. It's that cat game from the Unreal Engine dude, and it looks beyond meat to me. This is something we talked about when we were talking about the Unreal Engine, and it's probably not an exclusive, but it's really neat that they showed it here. Stray is this game where you play as what seems to be a delivery cat in this post-human world occupied exclusively by robots. It's really a charming looking title, and if it manages to be fun, it's probably gonna be a classic, honestly. At number 9 is Kenna Bridge of Spirits, which is a game that kind of looks like a DreamWorks cartoon if it was Breath of the Wild. The combat does look fairly distinct from Breath of the Wild, however, you can definitely tell that it is at least somewhat influenced by the Nintendo title. That being said, it's way more detailed, and it's not the only title on this list that in my opinion kind of looks like that mid-90s random PlayStation 1 aesthetic brought into a new world. I don't know exactly how intentional that is with this title, because I don't think it's a PlayStation exclusive. I don't know, but it does look great, and I will be playing Kenna when it comes out, whenever that might be. And number eight is Solar Ash, which is a game from the Hyperlight Drifter guys at Heart Machine. 
To me, this looks somewhere between Hyper Light Drifter and Journey in that it gives you this very surrealistic landscape that you appear to be journeying towards the other side of. However, it also gives the impression there is going to be a lot of combat-oriented stuff in the game. Both of those games are some of my favorites from the last decade, so if I'm even vaguely right with my instincts here and it turns out good, Solar Ash is going to be a hell of a game that hits us in 2021. At number 7 is Little Devil Inside, a game that we still know relatively little about other than it's an action RPG that looks cool as hell. It's got a very distinct visual style and seems to send this samurai knight type out into various very hostile environments to complete missions. It does identify itself as a hack and slash. The Steam page for the PC version lists local co-op as a feature, which could be pretty cool. Although again, we don't know exactly what this game will turn out to be. Still, we've seen a lot of varying environments with a lot of interesting enemies. My guess is that our guy is some kind of monster hunter and he's going off into the world to do that. Little Devil Inside looks great. Can't wait to play it. At number six is Pragmata, which is a Capcom game that I don't know what to say about. I do not know if it takes place on Earth, if it takes place on the moon, if it takes place in VR. Clearly, it's some kind of fake world, I'll say. But beyond that, we don't know a lot. It is intriguing, though, and Capcom's kind of been on a roll lately, so I'm quite excited to see what this turns out to be. Pragmata is coming out in 2022, though, so it's going to be a while. At number five, it's Hitman 3. I'm just totally there for Hitman 3. Hitman 1 and 2 have been phenomenal. They've really been graphical powerhouses themselves, but we have basically every reason to assume that this is in fact going to be an even bigger and better tour de force of the insane stealth franchise. The trailer hyped Agent 47's biggest contract ever, but I mean, that's not why I'm playing Hitman. I'm playing it because it's Hitman and it's wonderful. Give me more Hitman every day. Oh, I have to wait till January 2021 and that sucks. At number four is a Demon Souls remake. I don't know that I need to say a lot. It's basically the game that really started the Souls trend. It's obviously a little different than Dark Souls. It has a slightly goofier tone, but like very slightly goofier. I mean, I really have to emphasize slightly here, guys. However, it looks like a very beautiful total remake from the ground up of your journey towards fighting the old one. We do not have a release date for it. However, apparently there'll be two different graphical modes, one that favors fidelity and the other that favors frame rate. I can tell you I'll be up frame rate all the way. I can't wait to play Demon's Souls, to be honest with you. I'm totally there for this. And number three is Gran Turismo 7, which we didn't get a massive amount of detail about. However, the gameplay footage we saw of it was absolutely beautiful. I think that it got obscured a little bit. The stream quality wasn't amazing, and there is not a 4K version of it on YouTube yet. So what I've been able to see does suffer from some fairly bad compression artifacts. However, it is safe to say that the lighting and reflections and all of the stuff that ray tracing might improve definitely look very much improved. And they also made sure everyone knew that there's a full-blown campaign. I'm there, but also I definitely want some more details, guys. It's obviously a PS5 exclusive, Sony owns Gran Turismo, but we don't know when it's hitting. At number two is Resident Evil 8, which was not something we expected to see today. However, hey, I'm there for it. They took a bit of a turn into the supernatural, which sounds kind of odd, but honestly, like this trailer blew my mind. It looks great. Also, the way they revealed it was a Resident Evil game was hilarious. They showed the word village, so you're like, a game called Village? What? And then revealed the Roman numerals 8 and wrote Resident Evil under I mean, it was, I, I mean, fairly humorous in my opinion. But honestly, I feel like they really started a hype train here. I'm there for every choice in the trailer. Resident Evil 8 is going to hit sometime in 2021. We'll definitely be following it closely. And finally, Horizon Zero Dawn 2, which we all honestly kind of expected. Horizon was a really big game when it came out, and it really like showed like, hey, single player games, guys. Single player games? Yeah, single player games. And I feel like that influence was really felt throughout this entire presentation. We were given a lot of single player games. And Horizon was really a big game that sort of reminded people that they could be really good and fresh and interesting. We're continuing the story here where the United States is the new area we'll be exploring. Obviously, this is a bleak post-apocalyptic future with robot dinosaurs everywhere. And apparently there's something definitely threatening the entire world, although we don't know much about it yet. Horizon 2, definitely an exclusive and also no release date doesn't stop us from getting hyped.